area. This is D, and the time right now is 6.48 a.m. Um, I guess that that's what happens when you have a messed up buddy clock and you live in a pandemic. We sleep weird hours, we wake up weird hours. Um, we do stuff at the randomest times. So I woke up uh, around past 5 a.m. Even if it's a Sunday, uh, we spent the previous night binge watching uh, an anime with my two brothers. Um, so, like I said on my previous video, I am planning to getting back on reading after um, neglecting my books for about a year and a half. Pretty much um, after the pandemic started. So. I talked about the books that I have contemplated on picking up uh, in order to begin my return to reading. And in that video, I talked about how I ultimately decided on reading um, A.S. King's um, Gloria O'Brien's History of the Future uh, because this is uh, a genre that I'm very familiar with. Um, this is YA, uh, contemporary YA, which is A.S. King, um, some, something that A.S. King really excels in writing, particularly what she's known for. Um, if she's familiar, um, it's because she's got a lot of um, popular YA novels. The last I've read from her was um, Everybody Sees the Ants, another really popular book in the book booktube community but uh, other than this I've also read her um, Prince Honor book novel which is please ignore Vera diets I have that on ebook that's where I read it and of course the very first novel from her that I've read which to this day still remains my favorite um, which is reality boy she A.S. King sent me this bookmark when she sent me this book uh, in 2014. Um, I really love this bookmark because uh, not only because it features Reality Boy, which is my favorite novel of hers, but also because it says, it's probably inverted on a screen, but it says, what are your demands? What are your demands? So, um... I said on my previous video that I would do um, check-ins every time I reach a milestone uh, when I start reading this book. Um, and since I got up uh, at 5 a.m. today, um, I started reading and I'm now at page 52 of this book. And so far, I have a lot of thoughts in my head and I thought I would do a video quickly because um, this is really something that resonated with me um, when I started this book. Um, the fact that there is a reason why A.S. King is such an excellent YA writer. Um, because she does YA characters so well. You know, the thing with YA gen the YA genre is that there's a particular kind of sincerity that you have to have on your storytelling for it to really echo on the, the minds of young readers. So good YA writers, uh, in my opinion, tend to really create or weave a story that um, connects so well with the youth but an excellent YA writer is someone who can really present you a story even though you're no longer young even when you're already past your teenage years um, they can still really make you feel what it feels to be at that period of your life which is very bittersweet um, that is an age where you feel everything so intensely when you have 
this overwhelming feeling of uncertainty with what the future looks like, how the world operates, you know, um, a certain kind of rebelliousness, a certain kind of defiance. Um, this book is going really great. Um, I love the characters so far. Um, a lot of, uh, well, pretty much every uh, A.S. King book that I've come across are very character-centered. Um, just not really that big into plot. Plot is still really done well, but I think at the heart of every A.S. King book is the brilliance of her characters and how they really feel, sound, act, think so authentic, which is not a lot of authors can do, you know? Um, whenever you read or pick up uh, an A.S. King book, it's not like you are watching a teenage rom-com, uh, a teenage high school movie where the actors uh, and even the direction and the writing feels very staged or very scripted. Um, it really just generally feels like reading into the thoughts of someone who is living in that era, in that particular world, in that particular um, family. Um, I, I said family because that's one thing A.S. King also does really well. Um, uh, a recurring theme on her books are dysfunctional families. And uh, the two main characters here, apart from our titular character, Glory, is her best friend, Ellie. Um, Ellie, her best friend Ellie, comes from a family who lives in a hipster commune a hippie family and glory herself um her mom died by committing suicide when she was uh four years old um her mom put her head in the oven which is very reminiscent of sylvia plath and uh her mother was uh, a photographer and her dad is uh a former artist who ever since her mom died um, has stopped doing paintings uh, from that point onward so they have two different family backgrounds two different kinds of upbringing but I think it only further solidifies um, the theme of friendship in the lens of A.S. King's perception that um, sometimes friendship is not just merely you know bonding over our similar interests or sim similar passions but I guess more than anything else friendship um, can be felt even more intimate or more deeply when we share differences and vulnerabilities um, so openly or even if not openly we can feel them and we're very aware of them, but we still stick together despite of that uh, or despite that. Um, that's that's what a mature friendship really feels like. And A.S. King captures that so well. Um, I love that her chapters are divided into just, you know, um, phrases, not really chapter numbers. Or anything and the chapters are really short so it feels like you're really progressing through the story really quickly um, it has a quirky uh, prologue but um, this is what it says book one the origin of everything um, we get an introduction to uh, the world that they live in their school life basically but what I really love about A.S. King's writing is that, you know, when you feel like something is so well written and you want to somehow annotate it, mark it, um, highlight it just for um, documentation purposes because you like the way it was written or it was a very codable cult, as we call it. Um, 
if I would do that uh, in a skin box, I would pretty much um, highlight the entire thing because she writes so well. Um, she writes in a very, um, how do you say that? The way the character thinks, the way the stream of consciousness goes in her storytelling is very anchored on the personality of and the trait and the background of the character. The way she views life, the way she looks at things, the way she perceives people is very central or very centered on uh, everything she believes in, everything she, she has experienced uh, in life so far. That's what I really like. Um, so it doesn't feel that she's trying too hard or that um, because you know some some writers um, you somehow still really feel the author <laughs> writing their voices. Um, so it comes off as so little you know scripted and all that. But it's what A.S. King does so well. Every single one of her books um, are never the same. Um, you know how good actors, whenever they portray characters in films, they tend to sometimes still have the same mannerisms, the same gestures, same expressions on their faces. But the really excellent actors can be a total chameleon and really blend well into the roles that they portray so that you don't see their real life personas at all because there's their um their certain performance brings so much um credibility so much gravity to the story that they're trying to present that it makes you forget the reality and that's what I feel so far on the first 50 pages of Glory O'Brien's History of the Future because uh, that's very important to me that I believe the authenticity that's very important in YA and I like it I really love it so far um, it's very gripping and um, I really am so amused with the way she thinks and the way they have very stark differences. Um, there's a certain kind of explanation here that um, really captures their friendship dynamic so well. Um, as they are teenagers learning things, um, her best friend Ellie is so obsessed thinking about sex. And Glory, on the other hand, is obsessed about death because I think um, her mother's su suicide has really impacted her a lot so there's a lot of really great um, great things here but I guess let me just read uh, a particular page that was really written so well so I'd like to read um, this particular portion of the book that really made me think this storytelling is really solid. Um, it's a chapter entitled, Everything Tasted Like Radiation. Uh, anyway, quick note, um, Glory's mother is named Darla. It says here, Ellie hadn't been to public school with me since we finished the 8th grade and in the 4 years since. She'd said, homeschooling is faster because there's no repeating everything all the time, about 11 trillion times to me. Maybe that was true, maybe not. Seemed to me homeschooling was just another way to keep all those kids in the commune from seeing the real world. I didn't like the real world, but I was glad I knew about it. Darla O'Brien didn't like the real world either, so she stuck her head in the oven. My dad loved the real world. He, he ate it up. Literally, he weighed 240 pounds now. Not a bad weight unless you were 5 foot 4 and 120 pounds when you started out. Dad had never replaced the oven, not even with an electric one. Our kitchen had never had an oven since letter N day. 
just a freezer full of food that could be cooked by the microwave. Everything tasted like radiation. Ellie wouldn't come to my house if we were cooking because she believed microwaves gave you cancer. She never could understand why we didn't have a huge stove like they had on a commune. A stove that could pickle and blanch and reduce fruit into jam for the winter. It's not like that could happen twice, right? She'd said once. By that, she meant Darla sticking her head in the oven. I'd answered, no. No, I guess that couldn't happen twice. But it could, right? There were still two people left in my house. I was one of them. Whenever I thought about what Ellie had said, my guts turned. Sometimes I got diarrhea from it. Sometimes I threw up. It wasn't as easy as it can happen twice. Anyone who knew anything about what Darla did knew it sometimes did happen twice because it's often hereditary. But Ellie just said things without thinking. That was hereditary too. Ellie's mother, Jasmine Blue Hefner, believed that the microwave oven was no different from an atomic bomb <clears throat> because it was invented by defense contractors during World War II. I figured by the time Ellie applied to colleges, she'd either be smarter than me from learning so much faster in homeschool, or she'd be so brainwashed by Jasmine Blue that she would score badly on her AST because she believed a microwave oven was the same as an atomic bomb. Ellie might have defended homeschooling to me, but deep down she knew what she was missing. From the day she stopped getting on the yellow school bus with me, she started complaining about the commune. It was as if school was her one real world connection, and cutting it off made her feel like a bird in a cage. So things like that, um, it's very organic how she talks about the world uh, in a way that really makes you visualize how things are from her end and it gives you a really good glimpse of how their differences are so blatant and it makes you kind of think um, how they've been friends in the first place but the later chapters uh, do such a good job uh, explaining to you how they gravitate towards one another and where their friendship has really played important parts in each of their lives. So, you know, I'm very excited with the rest of the book and I would soon do updates later on.